You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nera here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent, Alex's Path. So that mean old guard it just shoot us away. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes. Let me entertain you and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you're up and let's go. All right, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> You quickly retreated out of the guard's sight before calling Alex on your phone. Cassian, I'm still in the middle of something here. Speak quickly. Um, the guards aren't letting me in, Alex. They're also pretty rude about it. But of course. Ugh. I already instructed them to let you through, but they've most likely forgotten. I'm still in the middle of some preparing procedures. Might take a minute or two, but I'll meet up with you at the gate. All right. You waited a little bit before going back to the guards. You again? Well, now, you just can't cause trouble in any other places, huh? No, wait, I can explain why I'm back. Oh, yeah, you will, buddy pal. How about you speak to this? The guard promptly took a step towards you, only to startle only to startle as you heard Alex yelling from afar. Hey, stand down. He's my friend. Uh, Master Alex, you know this guy? You think? Did I not instruct you to let him in? I've told you the specifics down to his fur color, and yet all you still couldn't remember. Inconceivable. Uh, I'm sorry, Master Alex, but, but please, come in. Hmm. And if I may have a word with you here, Corporal Smiths, right? I yes. Let me make this very clear then, Corporal. I understand we're on heightened security, but that doesn't mean being an asshole to everybody you come across. There's already a lot of tension given what happened, and the last thing we need right now is to have, an even, have even more unrest because of people like you. So watch your damn manners unless you want me to file a formal complaint to your division. And then maybe you can finally understand how how an action of one individual can jeopardize an entire collective. Uh, understood, M Master Alex. Come, Cassian, we haven't time to waste. You followed him inside the inner circle of the park, near the base of the crystal. Thanks, Alex. Hmm? For what? For what you just did. I can't just have them beat you up. That jeopardized my only test subject. Uh, okay, still, uh, thanks. You're welcome. Now hurry up, will you? Okay. That guard is a dick. You headed further along the ramp leading up to the base of the Guardian Crystal, which stood majestically against the sky. Whoa! Heh, <laughs> you'll get used to it. It's very beautiful, and the sound... The sound? Yeah, I always hear it faintly every time I'm in town, almost like a chorus of humming noises. And now that I'm here, I can hear it loud and clear, and more than ever, it sounds very beautiful. Interesting. But alas, we're here to work, Cassie, and not to stand around admiring auditory hallucinations. Oh, right, I, I guess not. So what can I help you with, to actually? Well, you can help me figure out, hey, figure some things out. Like what? Did something happen to the crystal? Oh, no, surprisingly, nothing at all. There's not even a single thing wrong with it. Whatever deharmonized the crystal that night is now gone. So it can, what, stabilize and repair itself? Uh-huh. The Guardian Crystal as a whole is still quite a mystery to us. We merely built it based on the prototype which tried to replicate the Akai Tree's protective force field in... and... the Spring Sorcerer's Guidance. Without her, this thing wouldn't have worked at all. I spent the past years trying to replicate her works and dissecting her blueprints. I've made some progress, but it's still far from what a 100% replication. Is it too complicated? Not complicated, per se. It just requires a lot of fine-tuning, which means you've got to have some kind of attunement to begin with. But for her, it came very natural, as if she had some sort of an innate affinity towards crystals. I've heard that she could... Oh. <coughs> oh, bless me. Oh, goodness. Sorry about that, guys. I came out of nowhere. I've heard that she could uh, talk to them as if they were alive and sentient beings. Maybe that's what makes the difference. Hmm. Talk to them, huh? Well, either way, I do have some theories to test. Can you touch the crystal? Uh, touch it? Yeah, just go up to the Guardian Crystal and touch it. Don't worry, it won't hurt a bit. See? He reached an arm to the crystal's base and lightly nudged it. Nothing happened. Huh, okay. You reached out towards the crystal. Almost immediately, you could feel a fuzzy and tingly sensation, which grew stronger the closer your hand got to the crystal. Uh, are you supposed to feel this? Just touch the damn crystal. He pushed your hand towards it, and without warning, a surge of energy coursed through your veins, rendering you shocked and dazed. Whoa! She, 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 wha 
You tried to sound off, but all that could come out of your mouth was stuttering gibberish. Try as you might, you couldn't pull away from the crystal either. It was like being stuck to a magnet. A alex help Oh, what in the maker's name? Crap, hold on! Alex grabbed you by the waist and yanked hard. You're so heavy! He heaved several times before making another pull. The force this time was just barely enough to separate you from the Guardian Crystal, whose radiance seemed to flicker for a brief moment before going back to normal. Huh! Ah. Huh! Ah. Huh! Ah. Woof! Damn! I'll be! I didn't expect that reaction from the crystal. Sorry about that, Cassian. You tried to speak, but with your tongue still shaking uncontrollably, you failed to even articulate the first words you had in mind. Hmm? Why are you speaking like that? Try to speak normally. Sure. You decided to take a deep breath to calm yourself down. Here, have some water. Alex handed you his bottle. Just sta. Uh, you drink. F just drink first. I can't understand you. You just nodded. You nodded and drank up. You felt strangely dehydrated after the incident. You rested for a while until the tingly sensation subsided. You could speak normally again. Whew. Phew. Better. Yeah. Sorry. How are you feeling? Well, I mean, what did that feel like? It's like getting zapped by lightning, like a sudden flow of energy just burst through me. I see. Hmm. Yeah, that's a common thing for magic wielders. People would utilize the energy surge from crystals to reinvigorate their power. The shock from the Guardian crystal tends to be a bit much, though, so they just they'd switch to smaller energy crystals instead. Interestingly, you must be an empty shell, what with your minuscule amount of magi. Hence, the Guardian Crystal would compensate with a big burst of energy, like a broken dam unleashing its water down the stream. What you've experienced just now was System Shock, where the surge of energy was simply too much to bear and quite literally fried your system. <laughs> I thought that'd be more like Bioshocked. Semantics. Well, still, what does that mean for me? Can I not ever do magic now? No, it's quite the opposite, actually. I think you might be ready to learn some basic magic. Huh? But I thought you just said my system was fried. It's just a figure of speech, meaning you just got majorly zapped. As long as you're still alive, then the rest of then the rest about you is unaffected. Anyways, I get what I got what I needed. You may drop on my lab next time around, and I'll teach you some basics. All right, do you need anything else? Hm, no. I think I'm all right on my own for now. There's still some diagnostics I have to run on the Guardian Crystal's frequencies before I can wrap things up. You should probably go check on the others if you'd like. Oh, uh, okay then. Uh, see you later, Alex. Uh-huh. Uh, do be careful, though. <laughs> I will. He left Alex to his devices and returned to the inner park entrance. The guards didn't seem to bat an eye on you this time around. There wasn't much else for you to do either. there, either. Looks like you're done here. Better check up on the others. Nope. Okay. Uh, where'd he go? Let's go to the beach. do 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 Go back to the park. You decided to go to Vitram Park where the Guardian Crystal was. It was quite easy to find the park given that you could see the crystal from every corner of the city. The park was divided into two sections. Let's go to the Outer Ring Park. You headed over to the Outer Ring. There's a lot of benches and food stalls around. Aside from the more frequent patrols of mercenaries passing by, the atmosphere was just as peaceful as any other day. Just a lot of people relaxing or having a picnic, either people having already moved on the front on from the incident, or they just didn't know of it to begin with, which still felt like a little j little jarring to you. You didn't find anything interesting or suspicious after wandering around for a bit, so you returned to the entrance. There's nothing left to do here for me. I should get back out there with the others. Oh, right, I should do the request as well. Let's see, go to the beach. Get that little kitty thingy down. I like the custom... People. It's pretty cool. You arrived at the beach. Where do you want to go? Let's go to the beachfront. You caught a glimpse of a commotion at the side of the beach. There are a bunch of people gathered around a palm tree. It's hard to see from this distance, but you could vaguely see some kind of cat-lizard thing near the top. It probably has something to do with that request I just took. I, I should come take a closer look. Excuse me! Excuse me, Mark's coming through! Oh! Oh! Uh, are you the one that took my request? P please! You've got to help me, please! C calm down, please. Can you explain what's going on again? Well, as you can see, my beautiful croat suddenly just climbed up this tree and couldn't get down on his own. Oh, honey, sweetie, please come back down. You just can't stay up there. 
The owner sobbed uncontrollably. He looked up at the tree. It didn't look that bad from afar, but here the height is pretty steep. Oh, p please, please, good mercenary. He's my only family. I, I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to him. He gulped nervously. One might crack a spine or two if they fell from up there. Uh, it's all right. Just stay put. I'll, uh, uh, take care of this. You looked at the tree again, taking a deep breath to calm yourself. Come on, you got this, Cassian. Just, just climb the tree and don't look down. It should be easy, right? I mean, if the poor cat, the lizard can get up there, you can too, right? Right? You took another brief moment of hesitation before approaching the tree. You wrapped your arms around the tree to get a feel for it. It didn't seem as big as you expected, as you could easily hug around the hug around the trunk. Maybe if you held on tight enough, you could slowly crawl your way up. All right, just give it a whirl. You got this. You began making your way up slowly, but surely trying to mimic those coconut farmers on a TV show you once you, oh, you once watched. So far, so good. Whew. You made a mental note to keep your eyes upwards at all time. Eventually, you got close enough to take a better look at the creature. Judging from its anatomy, it looked it looked like if a crocodile and a cat had a baby, which is a frightening thought, but it didn't look as much of a monstrosity as one would expect. It's been staring at you ever since you made the climb, but it still seemed too anxious to leave the palm leaf it was clinging to. Right, okay, uh, here, Croco, the kitty, I'm here to help you get down. Hiss! Brow! You reached towards the creature, but it backed up further along the leaf. Ah, oh, crap. It's definitely out of range now. You'd have no choice but to climb even further up top. Okay, just just don't look down, Cassian. Just don't look down. Repeating the same moves, you slowly made it to the very top of the tree. Though as soon as you got there, you accidentally looked beneath as anxiety overtook you. Oh, fuck! It's very high up. Shit! Uh... He clung to the tree even more, heaving and panting until the nausea subsided. God, everything is still spinning. So is this what vertigo feels like? Ugh. He looked at the creature again after having calmed down, who still seemed very, very wary of you. Hey now, um, nice croco kitty. Wow. Gah. You weren't sure how, but the pet managed to retreat even further, now clinging to the edge of the leaf. Yikes, uh, people, if this thing jumps off, then please at least catch it for me. Oh, I hope not, but we'll try. N no, Burra, sweetie, please come down. I got some food for you. Burra? Ah, oh, that's your name, right? Burra. Here, I can get you down. I won't hurt you. It seemed to do the trick. Upon hearing his name, the lizard cat seemed to lower his guard as he approached you. That's it. That's a good croc, kitty. He pet the creature on his scaly head as soon as he got in range, who purred in return and suddenly jumped towards you. Whoa, whoa, easy there. You're not the only one who's scared shitless here. Wow! Right. Now, how are we going to get back down? Huh, <sighs> just hang on to me, all right? The pet clung onto your hoodie flap as you very slowly climbed back down. It was very anxiety-inducing, if only because you didn't want to fall flat on the ground. After what felt like an eternity, you finally made it back as you dropped to your knee. You dropped your knees on the ground. Oh, sweet earth! Oh, Burra, you're back! You're finally back! But please don't ever scare me again like that! Why would you climb that tree to begin with? Hey! Well done! Not everyone can climb a tree like that. I guess you mercs really are cut above the rest. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but thanks, I guess. Ah, thank you again, good mercenary. As promised, here's your reward. Thank you so much for saving my dear crow. Uh, no problem, it's my duty, after all. You've completed your quest. You got five gold coins. You feel a bit stronger, too. Now that your work here is done, you've returned to the beach entrance. Where do you want to go? Finn... You never met this Finn before, but Ray did ping his location on the map for you, so it wasn't too difficult to make it to wherever it was. You could see Ray and his friend in front of the hut, sitting on the sand. Ray! Hey! Oh! You came! Hello? Hello! Uh, trying to do a more foreign accent for Finn, since he's actually not from around there. Hi! You must be Finn, right? Yes, indeed. He's a friend of mine. Friend? Oh, I'm heartbroken, Ray. Well, nice to meet you, Finn. I'm Cassian. Ah, so I've heard. Ray talked about you quite a bit. You're not new recruit to the guild, right? Yeah, I I'm just starting out. Well, feel free to come here and train with me if you'd like. I can teach you some techniques I learned from my hometown. Sure thing. Thanks for the offer. <laughs> so you're here to help me out? Yeah, anything I can do, or is there anything you've gathered? Hmm, nothing so far, I'm afraid. Finn was watching the beach all night yesterday, but he didn't spot anything unusual. Not a thing, yep. 
So yeah, this place is uh, this place is safe as can be. You could even say that creature didn't arrive through the ocean. It'd be problematic if it did. Yeah, then again, I don't think we've ever seen that many aquatic nether creatures to begin with. Huh? Well, why is that? Well, for one, the ocean is pretty massive, so nether dust just would just get dissolved and lose all potency to infect anything. And even if the king got some army beneath the ocean, the water will just dam also dampen the mind control effect, making it a lot harder for him to control these creatures. Whoa, how does that even work? Basically, I think it's kind of like if you try to shout through the ocean. Sure, the sound can travel faster, but it will become a lot murkier by the time it comes to your ears. We can hear it, but won't be able to understand anything because land creatures' ears aren't made to hear underwater. Stuff like that. Well, at least that's what Alex told me anyway. Huh, I, I see. Whichever the case, we can safely say that the sea will remain peaceful unless Atlantia somehow falls under the king's grasp. It's pretty peaceful here, too. Well, there's that. I'm gonna go look around some more. Feel free to go catch up with the others, Cassian. You sure you don't want my help? Nah, I think I'll be fine. Sorry to call you over, Cassian. It's alright, at least everything is fine. See you later, then. See ya. See ya! Well, I have some business to attend as well. Take care now. You too, Finn. It seems like the beach is clear. Better check out on the others. Where else? The market? Okay. He decided to go to the market district, which was... Which was made a straightforward, which was made as straightforward as can be with the map function. He arrived at a very crowded marketplace. There were a lot of stalls and merchants hawking many different types of wares, from meat, spices, vegetables to trinkets, or even weapons. He you made your way through the crowd and eventually spotted a familiar bear speaking to one of the ve vegetable stall owners. Hi, Cody. Oh, hello, Cassian. What are you doing? Me. I'm just uh, doing my own investigating, asking stalls and merchants if they saw anything suspicious. Oh, okay. Anything to report? Nothing so far, I don't think. All the stalls are closed pretty early on since everyone is still recovering from the incident, with the exception of a few bars and weaponsmiths. I asked them too, but they didn't notice anything strange until the chaos hit the streets. Oh, so nothing noteworthy after all? Yeah, it seems so. It's pretty peaceful here, at least. I don't know about the others, though. You could always call them on Alex's phone to talk about it, right? Well, yes, uh, but um, I, uh, I still don't really know how to operate this thing. I just don't want to break it if I fiddle with it too much. Huh, I just don't want to disappoint Alex again. Oh, wait, what do you mean, again? I think I'll be fine here by myself, Cassian. You should go check on the others if you want. Hmm, alright then, I'll see you later? Yeah, see you back at the guild. See ya. See ya. And with that, he moved on to another stall. It seems there's nothing more that you can do here. I also think Cody is probably just, like, like buying spices and, like, ingredients and such. That's why he wanted to go to the market in the first place. <laughs> Better check out on the others. All right, where else can we go? Do, 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 do. What is this? What are you? Oh. <laughs> All right, world map, okay. Let's see, let's go to Max. You decided to go to the old mines. Despite not being that far away from the guild, it was a bit off the beaten path. But thanks to the map function, you arrived there a bit after, after a bit of walking. You could see the cave entrance and an outpost nearby. Where do, you, where do you want to go? Uh, Mines Outpost. Oh, Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching a new episode of Heroes Advent, Alex's Path. Guys, I'm going to have a big announcement coming up soon. I'm just uh, figuring out how to uh, deal with everything right now. I've got like a kind of a big life-altering thing coming up soon, and I'm going to be talking about it on my channel. Um, the channel isn't going to change, no. You guys are going to keep getting content from me regularly. But uh, I'll, I'll discuss it in a separate video, alright? Anyway, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!